is BBC Three Counties Radio. A national football initiative uh, for teachers uh, launched uh, within the last year has raised money for the mental health charity Mind as well as promoting well-being in the teaching community. Uh, it comes under the hashtag EduFootyAid. It already has over 200 teachers involved and has raised over £5,000 for the charity. This Saturday, the action is coming right here to Dunstable as the team from the South take on the Midlands at Beecroft Academy, not too far from where we're sat right now. Uh, Sam De- oh. I should have checked. How do you say your name? Sam Delange. 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 But where's however that, you want. Where's that fine. come from? Uh, it's imitation French. Okay. It's, it's actually Dutch, but we make it sound more French in my family. Sam Delange is uh, the organiser. James Hughes is head of Beecroft Academy. Uh, good school, Beecroft. Great school. Great kids. Great staff. You've been there four years now as head. That's right. Four years. You're an academy. We are. What are your major strengths? Uh, looking after the children, being very caring. We do a lot of forest school activities. Today's been an outdoor learning day for Key Stage 1. We have one on Tuesday for Key Stage 2. So, yeah, really, really good. I'm a, a school governor. Are you? Um, deputy chair of school governor. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a school governor. And uh, and I see the, the challenges that, that you face at first hand. I'm also the safeguarding governor, which uh, tallies in with what we're about to talk, yeah. to, uh, talk about here. And, and I think it is very easy as parents to underestimate significantly the strain and stress that you're under as teachers. One of my biggest personal bugbears um, is when I see parents be unkind to teachers um, and the impact that that can have. So I'll give you an example, and you'll tell me whether you've seen sure. this at your school as well. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not picking out the school that I'm a governor. I'm sure this happens everywhere. But for example, um, WhatsApp groups. You know, um, Facebook, social media. Suddenly, instead of parents just being able to congregate outside the school and have a little natter, there are these whole swathes of communications happening, which, of course, get back to teachers. This is not unique to where I am. It's everywhere, isn't it? It is. It is. I call them keyboard warriors because they are uh, able to put their feelings down amongst a a closed group behind the keyboard and actually... uh, they don't always think about the impact that it's having because it does somehow get back to the member of staff or the school. Um, and it's, it's quite important to challenge those when, they, when we do come across them. You, you face it up, don't you? Yeah. We do. Uh, it's important to because actually uh, me and my staff are out on the, on the uh, playing playground every day and you can see parents, like you were saying, about those congregations. Well, actually, if we're there to talk to them, uh, they, a lot of it can be... Uh, nipped in the bud yeah, shall we say yeah, before it escalates I, I've known a lot of teachers in the years that I've been uh, in this in this role as, as a governor and I can honestly say that I, I could possibly only think of one at a push who didn't really care much you know what I'm saying is is the the overriding and by that I mean the 99.9% of teachers who do the job they do particularly at primary they really care and when parents um, give it to them in the neck they can only take that personally absolutely there isn't anybody that goes into this job and doesn't care deeply for children and their development there's plenty of other jobs they could do out there Um, and it's it is very hurtful for them because because they're so caring anyway and polite and deal with families and children in the same way when they then get uh, a little bit of criticism it can seem quite massive actually uh, and it's worth remembering as well that often we're dealing with NQTs, newly qualified mm-hmm. teachers. We're dealing with young people um, who are themselves not that long out of university, who are themselves finding their way in life. And, and, and it can be very damaging to their career, can't it? It can in the long term. There's, a, there's statistics out there that says how, how many teachers uh, quit after, before five years. And uh, we've got to nurture and look after these teachers because in the long term we're facing quite a big shortage out there. And we need really strong people to work with our young children for the future it's interesting you say nurture there and, and i'm entirely biased but the head teacher at my school is just absolutely phenomenal i i, I love her she's she's a, a true uh, leader she's creative she she can be a bit maverick she's she's everything that you'd want in in a head teacher and above all she's extraordinarily kind to her staff and her staff know that that she that they have her back um in your role as a senior leader and your senior leadership team you have a key role to play, don't you? Because you have to look after these humans. We do. We set the weather in the, in the setting that we're in and um, working with uh, all the staff, whether it be your senior leadership team colleagues, whether it's uh, right through your teachers, your lunchtime supervisors, the, the site agent, you know, it's very, very important to, uh, 
to to have a relationship with them and to understand you know is it their child's birthday um have they just had a bereavement is there something significant are they getting married are they having a baby what are their children's names now this is this leads me on to to another key point which is that um teaching is quite similar to my job okay and i don't know if you're going to see the link here but um no matter what's going on in your world as a teacher at 8 30 8 40 you're on mm. And you've got 30 children, especially at the age you're dealing with, who don't really care. I mean, they, they, children at the age of five, six, yeah, they, they're just very much interested in themselves. It's so very hard. And, and anyone who's a radio presenter or a comedian or an actor will tell you it's the same thing that you put your face on. Mm. And, and it's so very hard to do that. And that's at the root of a lot of the mental discomfort, isn't it? Because every day... They have to perform. They have to be that lovely, smiley, kind, nurturing person. Whether or not there's, you know, as you say, a sick child at home, a divorce, a, a parent who's died. Mm. Yeah, you, you have to be consistent. And the children thrive on that consistency. And they have to know that Mr. or Mrs. whoever is going to be there, they're going to be that set uh, barometer, if you like. Um, because they may be the only one in that little one's life that is like that. And... Um, it's very much, as you say, you put the face on, you go out there, you, you deliver, you act, and then almost come off stage at the end of the day and face the other emails or the some of the things you were saying before. And the adrenaline drops. Yes, and, um, and tiring. You often hear debates about holidays and, well, listen, it's okay. You've got, um, how many weeks holiday a year is it? Something like 30, 13 or 14 weeks in total. Um, yeah, the, the, the hours of a school day are relatively manageable. I, I saw you roll your eyes there because I know what you're about to say next. And also, in fairness, um, when you get to a, a position of, of, of relative, you know, even mid-ranking seniority and you can add little bits onto your portfolio, the, the wage is not bad. There are, there are people who would be quite happy to earn that, that amount of money. So what do you say to people who would say, well, come on, guys, you know, you're earning a good chunk of money. You're, you're getting time off to, to, to have a break. Why is it so tough? It's a good question. The, the time off is uh, a lot, but it is also very much needed uh, as well because the children need it. They need that break, that break from learning and, and, and the routine. They need that time with their families as well. Um, but teachers, you know, during the holidays, they're not often <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. Um, and during the working week, they're doing stuff every evening, you know, and it's about, for me as a senior leader, trying to manage what they do and what they do have to stop because when is good when is enough enough listen i remember when, when we moved uh, to the area where my children are now at school and uh we well we'd found a house and it was about 10 days before the start of the um autumn term and we had to make sure if the school was any good and i popped around the corner there were four teachers in there and this was you know third week in august mm. and uh and i said do you mind if i go no of course and they were putting up stuff and it just goes to show that even in the heart of the summer holidays listen sam we we, we will talk about the project after half past one and, and also your mm. friend who who was a teacher who, who who tragically took his life as well so i don't really think that we're not going to come to your story but i'm building up to it by looking at the life of a teacher and, and while we were while we were talking there actually a uh, gail hamill who's um who's our regular therapist on this program uh from circle therapy and tring uh, gail's actually called in because gail i I think that this is this is a topic which is very central to your work, isn't it? Hugely now, Nick, actually, because one of the reasons that our support for teachers came around is we were sitting in a therapeutic stance in school helping children and we were sitting with teachers and teachers were breaking. You know, teachers were, were telling us things that they were dealing with, that the, you know, 30 children with complex issues and, as you've been saying, parents with, with high demands. And actually, teachers now are the front line for mental health. They are consulted more about their children's mental health than the GP. So they are the frontline contact. If you're worried about your child, you would go to the teacher. So we've developed our practice now to really offer clinical support for teachers because we're seeing teachers under stress behind those closed doors. Without sort of breaking confidences and, and, and giving examples that we could attribute to, to individuals, what do you see when you go into schools? What are the stress levels? How serious uh, is their mental health dis-ease? How, how many of them do you find really think they can't even see a way out many and actually a lot of head teachers speaking to us and also you know their mask is there they want to support their teams but they're struggling and we see teachers you know as you said earlier putting that mask on in the morning and we touch base with them and say how are you feeling and they might give us six seven examples of children in their classroom who maybe there's been a bereavement maybe there's a parent who's just left and they're very very stressed about 
accessing that learning, helping the children that day. And they feel very, very stressed and, and they're tearful sometimes and they just need that regulating. You know, as therapists, we have supervisors. We're very lucky. We have, you know, a person to go to and, and offload and, and make sense of things. But teachers, they have each other, but they don't really have that uh, outlet that that place to make sense of what's theirs, what's the child's, what's the parents, and how can they protect themselves within that? Because it's J- a big ask. James, do you recognise this description? I do, I do. Um, it, it's so important to look after the teachers. Um, we 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 look after the children and settle their snow when they come in, and hopefully then be able to teach them. But. I have supervision with my well-being team, but I don't have supervision with my teachers. We check in with them. Like you say, they check in with each other. But um, it's it's very important because there's often a lot, there's a load that they carry that isn't just the teaching and learning. It's that whole safeguarding like you touched on before and, and the, the special educational needs, child protection, all sorts. All the while running a £1.5 million business with 40, 50, 60 employees. Correct. Who looks after you? My wife. <laughs> no, it's, it's a genuine My question children, because, yeah. because I've I've seen it in, in members of the senior leadership team who are who are looking after the the the, you know, the staff as a whole, mm. and there comes a point when s- someone needs to look after the senior leaders as well. Absolutely, and uh, I'm I'm very fortunate to have a great chair of governors who I meet with regularly, and we talk through all sorts of different things. Um, and I also have a close network of fellow head teachers because we we are often dealing with the same things, and some things you can't talk about to your senior leadership colleagues. Uh, who are under you within the school you have to you know speak to somebody that that is dealing with the same things and may have experience of it it, it actually really works I've, I've seen that where 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 local head teachers who aren't in competition at all yeah. in fact they're all very much uh, in, in the same game and they get together they literally they'll go out for a drink or they'll, they'll go, because you're all facing similar issues aren't you that's right it, and it's very important to be able to kind of take that mask off sit there and say oh you know this is happening for us this has happened I've never seen this before what did you do and you get that bit of that collegiate help and support which is very needed <laughs> just laugh <laughs> well yes yeah, absolutely uh, Gail it, it, when you look at this is is this the nub of the issue that these teachers are under a huge amount of stress massive responsibility they're looking after our children your children my children uh, they're at these schools uh, and really it can feel overwhelming well, I like the point about being a caring person that your guest was saying, you know, that completely resonated. We go into these roles because we care. You know, we were once that child that we're trying to help. And th- th- that's why it affects teachers. And, and head teachers are often teachers who've moved up the ranks and they still care, you know, just as much. So it gets to us when we feel that we can't either do our job or get children to learn because there's so many issues going on for them. So it does affect us. And I, I think, yeah, that this is, this is a, a huge huge thing because the primary task is to teach but there are so many barriers now in front of that task that we're trying to help with uh, certainly at Circle we're really trying to help teachers do that. It, it is very simple if we don't look after the teachers they can't look after our children does it? Isn't yeah. that the, the, the best summary? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, right Gail I need to set aside some time to talk to uh, Sam about his project we'll do that after the news at half past one. You're in tomorrow it's a little bit of Gail overkill if you ask me but we're, are we talking about anger tomorrow? We are talking about anger tomorrow, yes. 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 Uh, how to, I, where it comes from and how to counter it. Where it comes from, how to manage it, what drives it, and hopefully uh, how to help. Yes. Brilliant. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow complete with chocolate or some other treat or else you won't be welcome on the programme. I'll bring it. Thanks, <laughs> Nick. There's uh, Gail Hamill, uh, uh, my regular therapist on this programme from uh, Circle Therapy, uh, talking about the work she does with teachers as well. Um, I think this is a really important discussion. Before I go to my travel, um, you mentioned your uh, chair of governors there. I'm going to do a public service announcement, which I'm going to ask you to back me up on. Go and be a governor at your local school. Absolutely. We really need them. And we need people with skills across the board. It isn't just about people with educational background. We need people who have got skills in finance or uh, safeguarding, um, building, resourcing. Recruitment. Recru- recruitment. Human resources. Genuinely, it's, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, all those skills that people probably have out there and, and do them in their daily job, but we could really use them in schools. I'd even go as far as to say it's not about having educational background. I yeah. mean, on our board of governors, we're a right old rebel mix and, mm. and in a really good way. As you say, there's people there from, from business environments, mm. from uh, from more sort of um, public sector environments, people who've sold, people who've never sold. Um, 
there's a real mix and we all bring our skills and there are we're lucky we've got a full board of governors sounds like you've got a good we one do. as well there are a lot of schools in the three counties who are desperate for governors and i mean desperate for governors uh, it's you know a meeting a term a half term plus another little meeting and a little bit of extra it's not a huge commitment but you can make a massive 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 difference to schools uh, i rest my case uh, you're listening to bbc three counties radio i'm nick coffer after the news headlines at half past one uh, we'll chat to you um uh, sam all about this uh, project this is uh, a really interesting edu footy aid you're looking to raise money for mind and raise awareness around uh, what happens to teachers we'll talk about your friend uh, who was a teacher it. who took his life as well uh, it's exactly half past one emma's got your travel bbc three counties radio this is bbc three counties radio and you're listening to nick coffer um i enjoyed chatting to you before the news uh, james about your about your school you're obviously proud of it very proud very proud as i said great school great children great families really happy uh, it's exactly how a school should be um we'll ask some of the families see whether they agree with your <laughs> assessment no i'm joking uh james hughes is uh, head of uh, beecroft academy which is uh, just uh, very close to us here in dunstable i'm annoyed actually because i'd i'd got ready to play a life in a northern town by dream academy it's like dream academy <laughs> yeah um didn't do that uh, the reason we've been chatting to james is because um his school is hosting a match this weekend uh it's a football match where a team from the south take on a team from the midlands uh, as part of this, uh, it's a hashtag EduFootyAid, which has um, had several hundred teachers involved. They've raised over five thousand um, pounds for Mind, the charity, and it was all set up by Sam Delange. Have I got that right? Uh, you have got. I can't take all the credit. It was set up by, by uh, our company, Too Simple. I'm the the organizer there, so I'll take half the credit. I think is fair. So it was all set up by Sam. <laughs> Sam, you need, there's an important life lesson here, right? When the credit flows, you take it. I know, when, when my when, boss is when, listening. When there's trouble, you do. Okay. Yeah, but by yeah. the time you get back to your boss, it's too That's late. True. You're off that, Okay, all the credit. There we go. Um, so you're, you're one of the organisers of this event. And, and, and you've got a very personal uh, link to this story, haven't you? Yeah. Do you want me to start at the, the beginning? Is that okay? Uh, we can do it in full Mary Poppins style. Okay. So oh, no, hold on, that sound of music. Which is, where do we start the very I beginning? You've lost me already now, <laughs> we haven't started. <laughs> it's Sound of Music. Okay, okay. I'll, ta- I'll take your word for it. So we are, uh, we're an educational software company. We make resources for primary schools, uh, such as James's. Um, for many years, we worked with a children's author, former primary school teacher, a man called Johnny Zucker, uh, who, it's, it's, it's difficult to explain, but he was uh, a very special person. Uh, his wife recently, or in a newspaper article, described him as... Uh, the Robin Williams of North London, which I think actually does sum him up pretty well. Um, I had the pleasure of working him for about three, four years. In 2016, uh, Johnny took his own life and it hit us all at the company uh, pretty hard. We realised almost instantly there was nothing we could do to bring him back, but there was lots that we could do uh, to try and help those people that could still be helped. Uh, since that day, we have launched a number of different initiatives to raise money for MIND, to promote emotional resilience for primary school children. And our latest venture, EduFooty Aid, aims to promote well-being for teachers. I think as you guys discussed, sometimes the teachers are overlooked. We can focus a lot on what we're doing for the kids. And actually, if the teacher's well-being isn't at the right level, they're not going to be able to deliver those initiatives. So... Sorry, go on. No, no, you're right. We Thankfully, we do an awful lot for the children. It's a very different world to the one I was in when I was at school uh, 40 years ago. I think I, I think my own life outcomes would have been very different had I been at school today. I, only uh, my, my eldest is moving up a school, and, and we, we went to a senior school for the, you know, the meet the head teacher the other day, and I could not... Be, I mean, I knew it was a good school, but I couldn't believe what they've got in place. I mean, compared to what we yeah. had... I mean, you're a bit younger than me, aren't you? But, but compared to what we had 30, 35 years ago, mm. it's astonishing, and it is good. But you're right, the teachers do need to be uh, uh, helped so, so talk me through what's happening at the weekend and how my listeners can get involved and, uh, and what you need from us right so edu footy aid is a, a national initiative that uses the power of football to promote well-being and also to raise money for mind so we have set up nine uh, regional teams regional squads open to anybody who works in a school so if there's a teacher listening they are very free and we'd love to have them get involved and then we organize matches between the different regions so this saturday at Beecroft, we have got the South, including James. Yay, go South. Go South, right. Uh, playing... Is that, is that the right chant? That was good, that was good. It was yeah. good, South, South, South. Playing uh, the Midlands. Boo. Boo, right. Okay, so it's a it's a charity football match. 
we've got the two teams turning up uh, on the day and all the players involved are using this opportunity to raise money for mine. So already I think we've raised over a thousand pounds and I think James James where, 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 where's your team coming from we, we've got players from all over um, from one's coming from the Isle of Wight uh, which is good, really good commitment but they're coming from all over the south do you still need players or are you, are you... no we've got a full squad okay. um, but I know that Sam really wants people I, we, we want people to register this uh, this game the squads are full but we are always looking to increase our squad sizes because when the south is asked to travel up to Newcastle for their game I imagine less, less of them will be uh, keen to play on the so, day. No, so it's the opposite. We, we, uh, <laughs> if you want to go for a weekend in Newcastle, it's like, where's the where's the coach? The, well, they? we've found the home team always brings the uh, the bigger team on the day. So. so where can they register? So all they have to do, the easiest thing to do is just go to Google and type in edu Footy Aid. That's it. It will be the first thing that comes up. Click on the link and there's a big button there. And there is, I think, it was a charity uh, set up by that great left-footed Arsenal Brazilian player who's about to come back <laughs> as, our, as our technical director. That's what I was thinking. So so Google edu, edu, footy aid. Exactly. Um, and what I would say as well, because uh, believe it or not, most teachers won't be listening right now. Um, if you, uh, like I do at my school, have teachers who love their football, uh, let them know about this because they may not be aware of it. And, um, uh, and put, put them we all, One thing I would just like to mention, if that's okay, is that we our games are mixed gender that's very important to us that uh, the the initiative is inclusive but we are also very pleased to be launching uh, a set of female only games which are aimed to encourage uh, more female teachers to lace up the boots so if you if there are any female teachers listening we would really really love to have you involved as well good stuff so do a search for edu footy aid that's it. um c- can we come along and watch the game on saturday is, is it absolutely yeah we'll, we're going to be down there from two o'clock uh, on the school field the pitch has been cut and marked it's looking fantastic um yeah welcome p- lots of people to come down and watch uh, and see what's going on just as a quick final thought um your job is is very much uh, james about about role models and people you can aspire to be uh, dave mcpartlin are you going to be modeling your your future head teaching on do you know who i'm talking about yeah i do yeah, yeah, yeah are you not going to channel your inner dave I'm not only because my talents don't lie in it the same in, in the in same kind of way. Talent, yeah. Yes, because he was quite remarkable. Wasn't Absolutely, he? the children. <laughs> you know, those children are just bundles of, of energy, and they want to please. And you could see how much they loved him, but also you could see how much he, he cared loved and loved it, them. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's fantastic. This was Flakely, wasn't it? In, it in, yeah. in Britain's Got Talent, and um, it was basically like watching um, uh, an updated version of Nativity, really, wasn't it? It he, was. He, he, he was Mister. What's his name? Mister Poppy. Mister Poppy. There we go. <laughs> and, and good luck to him because you could see how much, as you say, his children children loved it and also how much he loved uh, looking after his kids as well uh, B Croft your your website for anyone who wants to go and find out more about your school I'm sure you've got a nice website it is, is www.bcroftacademy.co.uk good stuff nice to have had you both in the studio I hope the game goes well Thank on, you very uh, much. on uh, Saturday and up the south absolutely as we would say if we were doing this in quaint <laughs> quaint 1930s style uh, really good story there Edu Footy Aid if you want to find out more and uh, be kind to your teachers. Uh, it's really, really important to. It's very easy to forget uh, exactly how much they uh, how much they do for our children. Uh, 